Hey T heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, finding the best matcha. In this video, I invite you to join us as we travel through Japan to source our matcha tea. This video is gonna go under the tea trips playlist. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more tea videos are gonna come your way. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then go click that button. Welcome to Japan. Welcome to Shizuoka Prefecture. We've just arrived by bullet train from Tokyo, and this is our first stop in in our quest to find this year's matcha tea. It's springtime and every spring we need to source the May leaf matcha that we're going to be selling throughout the year. And the best way to do that is to visit the farmers and to taste their wares. I've already done videos before on everything that you need to know about matcha and how to brew matcha tea. I'll put links to those videos in the description below. But in this video, I would like to transport you to the farms, fields and mountains of Japan to show you how we source matcha so that you know what to look for when finding your own tea. So if you're ready, let's go visit the farmers. We're here in Okabe. This is our first stop in Shizuoka Prefecture to find our matcha tea. And we are in a gyokuro farm, but um, the tencha, the, the leaves to make matcha, are not going to be harvested for another week. They're harvesting gyokuro now. Um, and so I want to show you what basically tencha growing conditions are like. This is a shaded tea plantation. For tencha, it'll be shaded for 20 days or more for ceremonial grade. And all of our matcha has to be ceremonial grade. So therefore, when you're seeking out matcha, make sure it's been, it's been shade grown for at least 20 days before harvest. The picking for tencha um, is actually a bit larger leaf than for sencha and gyokuro. So if you, Celine, can zoom in here, you can see, can you focus on my hand here? Yes. So this is the standard picking for a sencha or gyokuro, a bud and two leaves. Sometimes they'll pick this leaf if it's um, nice and tender enough. But for tencha, uh, which is the raw material that is used to grind to make matcha, they want the leaves to be slightly bigger, something around this size here. What they want is the leaf to stay quite flat so that they can devein the leaf, which is take this main central vein out and they can grind it easily. So they intentionally allow the leaf to grow a little bit larger, something like this. They do not want to let it get to this stage down here where it's rough and rigid and waxy and is not gonna make good tea. So timing, as with all tea plantations that we ever visit, is paramount. So we're tasting Okabe matcha. Interesting fact, Okabe matcha uh, the, the tencha made in Okabe used to be predominantly sold to Kyoto to make Kyoto matcha, which is a very famous matcha, Kyoto matcha. But about seven years ago, the Japanese government um, stopped that activity. The matcha um, uh, derivation, where it comes from, has to be where the tea is grown. So now Okabe cannot sell its tencha to Kyoto to make Kyoto matcha. So this is Okabe matcha. Um, but it's interesting because it shows you that the quality in Okabe is very, very good. This is a uh, Yabukita cultivar matcha. So we're going to give this a taste. This has been um, made with hot water, 90 degrees, because we want to really bring out all of the flavors so that we can taste the weaknesses in the tea as well as the, 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 the things that are delicious in the tea. Very, very simple, clean, nice matcha taste, green grass, chlorophyll, nothing complicated, nothing complex about it. Very, very simple, too simple, really. Um, doesn't have enough depth and complexity. Um, it's commonly used as uh, the starting blend to make the matcha latte powders that are found all over uh, at various different brands selling matcha lattes. Those are usually then blended with vanilla flavorings and chlorophyll and other 
um, additives to make it uh, to change the flavor and keep it very bright green it's not something that we would purchase um, it's it's very very simple delicious clean um, but we're looking for a little bit more complexity We've moved from Shizuoka Prefecture to Kyoto Prefecture and we are in the very famed area of Uji. Uji is very, very well known for its matcha. You walk out of the station in Kyoto and everywhere you look, it's all about matcha tea. An interesting thing about matcha that most people don't talk about is that the farmers um, here and in other areas, but it's very well known in Kyoto, will take their tensha, which is the raw material um, used to, that they use to grind to make matcha powder. They'll take the tensha and they'll store the tensha in uh, pots like this one over here. I don't know, Celine, if you can get this one here. This is a pot um, made out of stoneware glazed, and they will store they will store the um, tensure in cold storage over time. And over time, what happens is the, the texture will become more smooth and the flavor will become slightly more mild. It, it will kind of um, polish off some of those kind of bright, um, spiky uh, cut grass notes and will become smoother and more rounded. Whereas the spring harvest tension if it's if it's ground immediately will have more of those bright notes and so the matcha producer's job is really to blend blend the tensure in order to have a consistent product according to their specifications so matcha is more about the expertise of curing the leaf and blending the leaf to have a very consistent flavor <laughs> We're in a beautiful shaded plantation in Uji in Kyoto. These ladies behind me are busy picking. It's picking season. I have to say, no matter which country I go to, um, whenever there's prime hand picking to be done, they always seem to be women doing it. Um, and it's a beautiful here. They shade this, uh, these tea leaves for at least a month. So this is a month and this um, covering here they will sometimes, depending on the variety, they'll sometimes put three layers and block out over 90% of the sun. So really, really, really dark shade grown tea. These ladies are busy picking the most tender leaves, which is going to be turned either into gyokuro or tensha for matcha. We are at the Aracha refining factory, which will eventually become Tensha, and then that will be ground down to Matcha. It's very hot and very noisy in there, so we decided to come outside. You can see that the picking, so this is the fresh leaf, the picking is almost like an oolong picking. Um, they wait for the buds to go down to practically non-existent, and so you've got larger leaves here, which means that it's easier to process. Then it goes through a very short, brief steaming phase, but it's really short, maybe 10 seconds or less. The oxidation is really stopped by air drying, so after the, the short steam, it then goes through an extensive drying uh, phase. First of all, it's blown around in, in air and it's air dried for a while, and then it's sent through hot um, air ovens at about 60 degrees for a, quite a long period, and it dries and dries and dries the leaf. It goes through a lot of drying, so they're trying to dry the leaf as quickly as possible. And you can see that this is different stages of the drying process. This is right at the beginning stage of the drying process, this leaf here. Can you get it in focus? And then it goes down to these kind of very brittle leaves here. Got it? So that's then uh, the brittle leaf, but they still have stems. Then it goes through a sorting phase, both mechanical and air sorting. So mechanical just through a sieve, and then eventually it gets blown around and the stems, which are heavier here, get, uh, get um, uh, pushed to the bottom so they don't get blown up to the top. And what's left are these very light, very dry leaves here 
and this is now the aracha which will then go for tensure refinement which will take away any other um, stems and also take away any woody parts and that eventually will be ground down to make your matcha. We are in the matcha grinding room in this uh, factory here. It's a day off today, which is probably a good thing because these are probably gonna be making a lot of noise. But let me quickly show you down here. The matcha, the tensure is fed through here. And these are the granite mills that are slowly turning, slowly turning. And the matcha is being uh, ground down, the tensure is being ground down and the matcha powder falls out of the, the uh, seam here between the two stones and then gets collected in the drawer below. Quite a neat little system and you can see I've got precious matcha everywhere. They have 30 stone uh, mills here which are constantly working during the day. So an eight hour day, 30 mills constantly working will produce, each mill will produce just a little over one kilo of matcha over the full day so it's slow grinding and this is really really important there is a huge difference between grinding in this way and grinding with machines because machines will add too much heat which will take it out of ceremonial grade and it will no longer be ceremonial grade matcha so ceremonial grade matcha has to be stone ground it has to be kept at a lower temperature at least uh, certainly under 50 degrees celsius in front of me, I have 2017 Shincha Aracha Tencha. In other words, it's going to become Tencha, but it still hasn't been sorted and it's spring harvest. It's freshly picked. They, they're picking late this year because of the cold snap in March and April. You can see here, this is what Tencha looks like. Um, and as I said before, larger leaves compared to Gyokuro and Sencha. Um, so they, they're picking the larger leaves. This allows the leaf to not curl up, which means it is suitable for grinding. This is still got to be sorted. All of these stems have to be taken away. The smell of these are, are really, really uh, nice and fresh. We've got three varieties in front of us. We've got uh, Ujihikari, we've got uh, Samidori, and we've got uh, Goko. And you can again see the differences. So this is Goko on my left, and this is uh, Saimidori here, darker color and the smell is much more creamy and um, savory on this one and this is a lot brighter um, and uh, again that Goko, what we're finding is Goko just has this kind of spiky brightness to it and what most matcha is is blended um, so most of the skill of the tea master um, is by tasting the different tensures from the different varieties, choosing the characteristics that they want to um, show off um, and weaknesses that they want to uh, hide and they'll create blends. So it's going to be a combination of taste, texture and cup colour to get the ultimate blend of matcha for the tea master and that really is the skill of the master um, is to taste the tincture and figure out what the blends are. And so we're here at a farmer, uh, farmer's place and we are tasting their matcha. This is uh, Uji Hikari uh, cultivar, this matcha here. And um, I'm excited to try it. The froth on this looks incredible. Jade green, amazing, amazing color. The taste compared to the ones in Shizuoka is completely different and the texture. The taste is a little bit more savory. It's definitely got more of that Gyokuro shaded tea taste to it. And the thing that I'm getting the most is a kind of creaminess and a very, very smooth texture, very smooth. It doesn't have any of the sharp notes of a kind of very fresh, kind of bright uh, matcha, which is slightly grassy, slightly astringent. It's really creamy and really, really smooth. It's delicious. Hey guys, we're back in London. Actually, it's been about two months since we were in Japan. We sampled matcha all over Japan in Shizuoka, uh, Makinohara area of Shizuoka. We went to Uji and we tasted lots of matcha there, but we decided to wait because the harvesting season was definitely later this year. So we mistimed our travel by a few weeks 
um, and the pickings were later so therefore we thought it was best to leave time for the farmers to pick the prize pickings for the blenders to make the perfect blends and for us to sample back again in London. So we've been sampling matcha from Kagoshima, from Uji, from Shizuoka. And in front of me, I have our five shortlisted matcha. And today I am finally going to be choosing our matcha for Mayleaf. So I'm gonna bring the camera around and I'm gonna show you the five shortlisted teas. So here they are, the shortlist, the five shortlist matches, finally after all of our tasting. Let's go through them. These two here are from Shizuoka Pre Prefecture from the Makinohara Plateau. This is a pure Yabukita variety from the Makinohara Plateau. This one here is a blend of Yabukita, Okumidori and Goko. Um, from the Makinohara Plateau. This one here is Asagiri from Uji in uh, near Kyoto. This one here is Homare from Uji, Kyoto. And finally, we have the renowned Uji Hikari, 100% um, pure Uji Hikari from Uji in Kyoto. So these are our shortlists. Obviously, first glance, these two have a very different color to these three. These are much richer green color, but don't let color be your sole judge of choosing your matcha. This is something that I've really learned over time is that a lot of times uh, manufacturers and producers will blend or create matcha specifically for color um, and, and, and the quality of cup color, and it does not necessarily translate into flavor. Having said that, one nice thing to do is just, if you take a finger, and you just stretch them over the powder and draw them out over a white bit of paper, you tend to have a little bit clearer idea of the color differences. This one here is definitely the most vibrant, rich green color. This one is the least. These are all pretty similar, but definitely the Uji varieties just have a richer color. But as I said, don't let that be your judge. We need to do the tasting. So we'll be right back after we've prepared them all and do a blind tasting. I always have to psych myself up. I have to say one of the reasons, another reason why we couldn't drink too much matcha in Japan because the caffeine rush that I get when I sample too much matcha means that it's impossible for me to taste more than a handful of matches um, every few hours without um, going off the edge a little bit in terms of caffeine. So this is gonna be quite a hit for me. There's five strong shots of matcha here. What we've done is we've uh, taken a teaspoon, full heaped teaspoon, and we put 50 mils of water. I haven't frothed it, we've just mixed it up. Um, and then uh, Celine mixed up the uh, uh, arrangement here, so I don't know which is which, but we've labeled underneath. Although I can quite clearly see color differences here. This one here is looking really green, so is this one. This is two, this is my guess, you shouldn't really guess, but my guess is that these two are probably the Shizuoka, but anyway shouldn't guess it's all about taste um, and as i said you shouldn't focus too much on color it's one quality marker but ultimately it's all about the taste so let's take a sip of number one cheers savory it's definitely got the umami rose the flowers are there definitely an uji matcha you can taste Uji matches just in general have more of the savory, more of the creamy and less of the fresh, bright, grassy. So it's a little bit more floral to creamy. And this has, it's got the floral. So sweet roses. A little bit of a simple candy sweetness, candy fruit sweetness and umami. Not so creamy. A little bit roasted in, in its notes, even though, of course, it's not roasted, but it has a little bit of that. Very nice. Number two. Totally different. Grapefruit zest. A little bit of concrete, kind of stony, more mineral. Very, very fresh. Nice. Nice. You know, more bracing, more of that kind of bracing matcha experience less of the creamy. 
this I'm pretty sure is from Shizuoka but it's lacking depth it's a bit flat now I should say that we've tasted lots and these are the short list of five so I've already tasted all of the teas but now I don't know which one is which I can make my guesses but I shouldn't do that so nice but I would say a little bit flat so if this is a horse race why don't we say that currently we're like that okay number three Cheers, everybody. Watch me get wired on caffeine. Ah. Mmm. Good combination. Fresh, grassy, got the cut grass. Does have some vegetal notes to it. Um, the vegetal notes are very spring-like, a little bit of asparagus, um, spinach. Not too savory, but it's there. There's enough umami there, but it's a nice, nice fresh balance. Um, a nicely balanced tea, this one. Uh, this is a very, it gives you that matcha hit that you want, but it's um, got a good refrain. It's elegant enough. So I'm gonna throw that slightly ahead of this one here. This guy here, very, very, very green. Let me give it a quick stir because I can see it's starting to settle. Give that a quick stir. Cheers, everybody. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> this is a very smooth, really smooth. Ah, oh, like velvet, savory, got the umami, got the vegetal, spinach, but cooked spinach rather than raw spinach. It's like the difference, this is more raw, a bit more young, a bit fresher. This one here is definitely more cooked, deeper, the color reflects it. Very deep, very creamy. Wow, the mouthfeel is very creamy. That jumps ahead there so ooh, and the persistence on that one wow I, I think I I might know which one that one is but um, I kind of hope it isn't because I know it's the most expensive one if it is okay so final matcher here well different again got a bit more more creamy a little bit kind of buttery to it. Hmm, can't put my finger on it. It's kind of mineral and buttery. So it's got rocky notes to it. Slight hot beaches, hot sandy beaches. It's got some vegetal, but it's much more toned down. There is a bit of floral, but it's not really anything too bright. The predominance, the real great thing about this one is its creaminess. This is a very creamy one. But I would say that this is kind of on a par with this. This one, more savory, slightly roasted, rosy. This one, more creamy. This one is definitely lowest in my book. Um, the color in this case, does reflect that that is a, a, a definitely a more yellow green than the others these two I would say are on a par now let's go for these two here let's see which one we're going to pick clearly difference in color so this is what I mean if I was just judging it on cup color then this would be the winner clearly but let's put these guys out of the way so just on cup color this would win but let's not do it that way Let's do it by taste. Bracing. Sea air, marine. Springtime, cut grass, like you've just cut the grass. That smell in the air that the grass gives off when it's been damaged. Raw, 
more of a raw taste. Definitely your kind of green juice kind of taste. Mm. Oh my God. This one is just standout, delicious, creamy, umami. It's got freshness. The texture is thick. The texture is velvet. It's incredible. Okay, so it's difficult for me because if I had to pick a winner, it would probably be this one. But this is really what a lot of people are looking for from their matcha experience, that very bracing, very fresh, very vibrant, very get up and go green taste. So I'm tempted by both. This definitely has more bitterness, but it's refrained enough. It, it disappears and that bitterness turns to sweetness. Difficult, okay, now I want to do the reveal because I need to get a judgment on price. I know the prices of these and I know that the 100% Uji Hikari is the most expensive by quite a long way. I'm kind of hoping that this is not the Uji Hikari, but let's find out. So let's do it in order. This one, the rosy one, the, um, yeah, nice slight roastiness to it, which is interesting. This says AU, so that's the Asagiri Uji. So it's an Uji, Asagiri variety, very, very, very nice. I mean, I would be very, very happy with this matcha at any, any dinner party. This would be a wonderful matcha. I think it could have, it could have been, could have been the May Leaf matcha. This one here, this is the Yabukita from Makinohara. So this is the most simple, um, the least uh, expensive, uh, the most affordable, but you can tell it's lacking. It's just, it's nice, a bit grapefruity, zesty. The bitterness persists a bit too much in that one. So that's definitely, that one there, please be Uji Hikari. H you know. <laughs> so this is this is the Humare from Uji. This is the Humare Humare from Uji. Ultra cream, ultra creamy, 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 creamy. Very, very nice, but a bit one-dimensional on the creamy. This one I'm gonna guess then is the blended from Makinohara. BM, yep, blended Makinohara. So the Makinohara, the Shizuoka, definitely produces matcha, which is less of the savory, less of the creamy, but has more of the bright, fresh notes. Really, really like this. This is um, um, very verdant matcha. And this one here, Yu Yu. The Uji Hikari from Uji. This is the 100% Uji Hikari. This is the one that's the most expensive. And this I know there are only 10 kilos of this matcha. So it makes it very difficult for me because the price point and the fact that there's only 10 kilos, which is not enough for us, for Mayleaf. Therefore, I have to go for this one. It's a delicious matcha. And I mean, it, it, it ticks all the boxes for your fresh, raw spring get up and go, bracing espresso replacement. This is great. I think this is our May Leaf Matcha. I know this is our May Leaf Matcha. This is definitely the May Leaf Matcha. Great, supremely balanced. Um, this guy, well, clearly, clearly I'm gonna have to get it because I love it so much. But it'll only be 10 kilos, so it'll go very quickly. Um, the price point is very high, but it is a stunner. It is a stunner. This is grade, grade, top A, 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 Uji matcha. If you're going to go for an Uji, I mean, these two Uji matches are delicious as well. But I figure if you're going to do an Uji, you know, might as well go 100% Uji Hikari. Go the full way and get the best you possibly can. So... Decision made, finally, after months and months and months, we're gonna be stocking the blended Makinohara matcha as our ceremonial grade organic. This is organic. Um, I remember this is an organic uh, matcha. But you know, this Uji Hikari is first flush, 
spring picked from one of the finest farms um, in Uji. So I know there's no pesticides on this. So they're both very, very high grade matches. Try them out see what you think that's it tea heads if you made it to the end of this video then please give the video the thumbs up check out our youtube playlist and let us know if there are any videos that you'd like us to make if you're ever in london then come visit us in camden to say hi and taste our wares if you have any questions or comments then please fire them over other than that i'm don from mayleaf thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea stay away from those tea bags keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea bye